Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. Today we're going to talk about starters. I mean, it's like the starter in my car. The well, solenoids we, going out. <laughs> we could talk about the starter in your car, but I think it would be more germane to talk about uh, oh, starters and beer. There you go. Big words again. Uh, specifically, what we're going to talk about is uh, using a starter to resuscitate old oh. yeast. So it's like CPR for yeast. That's right. Uh, it's kind All of right. a practical application because uh, I was going to brew a Belgian wit the other day, and I found in my refrigerator this Belgian wit yeast. And can you read the expiration date on that? Yeah, November 20th, 2007. <laughs> That's a half wit. <laughs> That's right, if that. <laughs> Yeah, this poor yeast was, uh, it's supposed to be like a nice creamy white color. It was about the color of your shirt. Ooh, that's when I start pitching stuff from the fridge when it turns that color. Well, instead of pitching this, you know, because I, I can't remember what, you know, yeast goes for nowadays, but instead of pitching this in the trash, I wanted to be able to pitch it into you, my you beer. brought it back to life. That's right. So let's talk about starters in general. Yeah. Why would we want to use a starter just in, in brewing any beer? There are some very good reasons, four kind of broad ones. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, if you've got a nice healthy yeast, you might want more of it. Mm -hmm. So you've got your packet of yeast if it's dry or you've got a, a vial or a smack pack or whatever, but uh, that might not be enough happy yeasties to make your fermentation take off. Or for a barley wine. Or for a barley wine, right, exactly. You, you just need a lot of yeast. So make a starter and you have a lot of yeast. You might also have a situation like James has, where you have some yeast that's past it. Um, there's some good yeast in there, but there's not enough anymore. And so you need to bring that back, the CPR for yeast. Um, the other thing that happens uh, is that you can make sure, say with one of these, you can make sure that the yeast is viable. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you make the starter and nothing happens, well, you've only invested a little bit of work, a little mm -hmm. bit of time. And that goes with the final kind of broad reasons why you do this. You want to make sure that the yeast isn't contaminated. Mm -hmm. So again, if you contaminate a quart or two of light malt extract, you've wasted very little time, very little money. But if you pitch that bad yeast into your five gallons of imperial double, triple stout <laughs> stuff that you've spent a million dollars on and you've ruined it, uh, mm -hmm. maybe a starter's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, we'll be sipping this starter to make sure that it's okay here in a minute. Yeah, I'm kind of anxious to... See how it is. But there are some rules that you can follow when you're, when you're making a starter, uh, especially when you're making a starter with uh, old yeast. You don't, you don't want to start big. You want to start small. Uh, and this goes for if you want to try to culture up some yeast from a, a bottle of, uh, say, a Belgian beer that you like. Uh, what I did was, uh, and I wish I had shot video of this, but I made a one-cup starter. Wow. It's about a, I started with like a, a one and a third cups of water mm -hmm. and put one tablespoon of light dry malt extract in there, boiled it up for 10 or 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and that got me a little wort that uh, was around 1030 is what I figured out that. And you, and you want to start with a moderate gravity in your starter from like 1020 to 1040, somewhere around there. You don't want a big gravity starter because that was going to stress out your yeast uh, oh, yeah. before okay. you pitch it in your beer. Mm -hmm. You want yeast that's nice and healthy, uh, that's got enough cell count to do the job, but isn't stressed out even before it gets to work on your big beer. Now, a question I have about this one cup of wort. How did you get an immersion chiller that small? <laughs> what? Where is this? I want to see it. It's a little bit... <laughs> it's a little tiny immersion chiller. Just some little tubing. <laughs> A little, silly, a little silly straw. Well, you can see what I did. I actually shot video of the next step. What oh, okay. I did was I, I let that starter go for a few days yeah. and let that ferment. And you can do this with, uh, I did this with a growler, but you can do this with uh, an Erlenmeyer flask and a stir plate, you know, to keep your, your, mm -hmm. your starter moving the whole time uh, if you want to invest some money. We're just doing the low-tech method, which works as well. Uh, or I don't know if it works as well, but it works too. Uh, <laughs> so what you can do is, is uh, over those couple days, you, every time you think about it, come and swirl up your, uh, your starter, and that will knock some of the carbon dioxide out and keep the yeast in suspension and keep it working. Mm -hmm. um, but what I did was, uh, after uh, that starter went through fermentation, I came back and I made a larger amount of wort to go on top of that, because what we're doing is we're multiplying those yeast mm -hmm. cells 
So we started from the very few yeast cells that were in this to the amount of yeast cells that were needed to ferment that cup of starter. Mm -hmm. Now we made a bigger wort to put on top of that because you don't want to under pitch your starter as well as you don't want to under pitch your beer. Right. You don't want them to this, the yeast cells well, to multiply so much yeah. that you know they're they're weakened. And and maybe the, maybe a way to think of it is that you're not you, yeah we're calling it a starter but you're making beer. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just a little smaller quantity. But you're just making you're making little beers. And the rules all apply. So this this starter was actually one quart of water with one half cup of light dry malt extract. So you mix one half cup of light dry malt extract into a quart of water, you stir it up, you get it boiling for 10 or 15 minutes. You don't bring out the little bitty immersion chiller. <laughs> I was actually able to use just cold water yeah. in the sink at this time of year. In the summertime, I have to use ice, but just put the pan in the, and immerse it, uh, immerse it into some cold water, yeah. get it down to like 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius, pitching temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, through a sanitized funnel, I poured it into uh, the growler on top of the existing starter, shook it up to aerate it, put the stopper on. Sure enough, a couple days later, it was fermenting happily, blooping along. And uh, then uh, I put it in the fridge to, to settle the yeast out after it was finished fermenting. And we have a shot of uh, what's at the bottom of this one. We have a nice, uh, fairly thick layer of happy, happy. creamy looking yeast. That's great. So, so what's the next step, Steve? How do we, how do we use this starter in, in making a, a full beer? Well, there's two things you could do. You could uh, just take the starter as it is and just pitch it right into your beer. Mm -hmm. um, and if that, if, you, if you're making like a pale ale and you've got a pale ale starter and you don't have a whole lot of it, it's not going to affect the recipe or you know, the mm -hmm. final flavor of the beer very much, if at all. On the other hand, if you've got a whole lot of, uh, of starter wort, right. three liters, you're going to make a big lager, big pilsner, that really will affect the flavor of the beer, or the final beer. So you may want to discard the, uh, the starter wort mm -hmm. so that you decant it, just like you decant a beer or decant a bottle of wine. Get rid of that uh, starter wort and then slurry up what's left at the bottom and pitch that. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the two things. And um, Some people f prefer to, if they're going to pitch the whole starter, when the, when the starter gets into full croisin, when it gets into the full active fermentation, <clears throat> they pitch it just then. Other people like to uh, put it in the fridge, let the yeast flocculate out, pour the beer, because that's beer. It's, yeah. it's unhopped beer, but it's still beer. Uh, pour that beer off, like you said, swirl up the rest of the yeast and, and uh, pitch it into the, the beer, and, and away we go. So why don't we try this beer? Yeah, we'll make sure to see what it tastes like. Now, you, this will be sanitized before we put it back on. We'll probably flame the, the top of the, of the bottle as well mm -hmm. so that we can make sure that it's, it's nice and sterile um, <laughs> so that when we pour it into the beer, it's not, not bad. Can we brand this Flame Kissed? <laughs> flame Kissed uh, Belgian Wit. Oh, look at that. Yeast in the. I wish I had set up camera two now. There's a nice creamy layer. Well, there really yeast is. Yeast in the bottom. And this is just a light dry malt extract unhopped. Cheers, by the way. We, we, we missed the. There we go. Well, that's pretty tasty. Mmm. It's really pretty good. I mean, you know. It has a citrusy yeah. taste like you'd expect from this yeast. Mm -hmm. It's nice and clean. There's no hops in it whatsoever, obviously, but... Mm-hmm. Mm. It tastes like a wheat beer, even though it's not... I was gonna say. It's not, <laughs> it's not wheat. Well, no, it actually, and also the, the hop profile is kind of like some of the wheat beers <laughs> I've had. Oh, There's right. not a lot of hops going on in those either. That's true. But uh, that's, that's fine. I mean, if you could hop that up, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. Put a little dry hop on it. And <laughs> <laughs> but we have proven that the, the yeast works because it's fermented beer. Yeah. We've proven that it's not contaminated because it tastes good. It tastes great. So that, that starter is ready to go. It's ready to go into my beer. Now, will you just pitch the entire thing in here? Or are you going to slurry it off or decant it off? Well, since I've already settled the yeast out, what I'll do is probably just decant it, swirl it up, and then and pour the yeast in. Cool. All right. Well, this has been very enlightening today, James. Well, thank you, sir.
I appreciate your help. Yeah. So go out there and make a starter and make some good beer. Yes, indeed. Happy brewing. Happy brewing. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you'll find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find a special deal on our home brewing DVDs. In Introduction to Extract Home Brewing, we walk you through the extract brewing process from boiling to bottling. In Stepping into All Grain, we take you from milling your grain to collecting your wort. And in Low-Tech Lagering and Decoction Mashing, we take you through a single-step decoction mash and show you how to maintain lager temperatures, even in the heat of summer, without the use of a dedicated chest freezer. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. You can email james at basicbrewing.com, steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. Don't, don't look at me and don't laugh. Thank <laughs> you.